we've come to the end. I know, don't, don't cry, it's cool. I know, I know. Um, but uh, we're going to close it out. Um, how, how'd it go today? <laughs> yeah, mighty and strong. Uh, how'd it go yesterday? All right, okay. How'd it go overall? Did you enjoy the activities at night? Who went to the block party? Yeah. Okay, who owes, owes uh, Tom Tobin money for, uh, for, for playing cornhole? Yeah, no one. Everybody put this down all of a sudden, right? Real quick. <laughs> uh, I am lucky enough to uh, join my friend, my partner, uh, and fellow thought, um, thought partner, uh, Joni Degner, up here as we kind of close it out. What's up, Joni? Hi. <laughs> Um, so we're going to talk about, we're going to close it out with this idea of the rise of the influencer uh, and this moment going from rock stars <clears throat> to influencers uh, and what that kind of means as we move forward and what's, what's the future of UDL kind of look like. Yep. Huh? So um, a lot of the talks, well first of all we heard um, Louise talk yesterday morning um, about the echo chamber that we kind of get stuck in. Uh, we heard Liz's talk this morning which kind of resonated a similar theme that um, there is a, 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 a bit of um, maybe elitism uh, that exists when we start talking about um, UDL in terms of rock stars, because when I think of rock stars, they think, well, now there's only one Mick Jagger, right? Um, but the reality is um, that that's really not the nature of our field. I mean, that might be the nature of like what Mick Jagger's doing. That's not the nature of, of what we're doing in trying to really change education uh, and, and to really uh, to, 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 to tear down the, the systems of education that don't work for all learners. Um, and so when we think about that, the truth is, like in our field, um, we're not really talking about Mick Jaggers. We're really talking about people who influence your thinking and who influence your work. Um, so when Brian and I started thinking about, like, well, how do we really want to close this out? If we're really kind of bringing everything together, it really is time to start thinking about, like, how do we move our mentality around the, the people who we think are moving the work um, to thinking about it in a much broader sense and really acknowledging the people who are, are, are moving the work in all corners of our field. And so in doing that, it really is time to kind of stop talking about rock stars and start talking about influencers. Right. I, let, I gave you the technology because uh, as we all saw this morning, that's not, I guess that's not my thing. Um, is it working for you? Well, I hit the green button. Yeah. Yeah. Can somebody advance our slide? Oh, so that's us. That's us. That's us. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, right. Uh, so this is Joni, and uh, you can find her at uh, on Twitter at Degner Joni, and that's me sitting over there in the pineapple suit. Uh, can you give us one more? <laughs> and so Joni kind of covered over this, right? Seeing yourself as an influ influencer, valuing and amplifying voices in all parts of the work, and smashing elitism in the field. And it's not elitism that we, that we have constructed. Like, that's really, really important that we understand that. It's not elitism that we have said, you know what? We're going to build as many walls as possible, keep people away from each other. But they happen over time as, as we start to as we start to kind of consolidate what we're thinking and how we're moving and start working in isolation. Can you give us the next one? So what is an influencer? Uh, influencers impact the way you feel, right? They cause a reaction. They're a trusted source of information. You want to, you want to take yeah. it? <clears throat> yep. They have a presence in the field, right? So you see them, or you at least see traces of their work. Um, and they make you think or reflect. A lot of times, like, we see um, kind of the same message delivered. But you know who your influencers are. They're some of those people that, that you don't necessarily nod your head in agreement all the time. Sometimes you're sort of like, Throwing your brow and trying to like like connect the things that they're saying to the things that you already know, right? The people who who give you that new learning. And then, so then, what does it take to be an influencer? Um, it's this idea in your own self-efficacy, right? Like we spend a lot of time in education, kind of saying, well, you know, I'm not that great, you know. And somebody's like, no, you're really fantastic. I know, but you know, it's it's the kids, it's the kids, and that's true. But somebody's got to do it. Somebody's got to set up the environment. Somebody's got to set up the, the, the learning, right? Somebody's got to scaffold it. So it's the belief in our own self-efficacy, understanding that we are expert learners, and understanding that we are learners with expertise, right? And being able to own that. Another side of that is connectivity, right? In whatever form you choose, whatever form you choose. Like, you could be a person that stands up on the stage, or you could be a person that just builds a PLC. You want to add to that one? Yeah, I mean, we also know that like there are people who routinely get into UDL chat like every two weeks. That's connectivity. I also have practitioners in my own school who have kind of started building their own self-efficacy 
and I've decided like, you know, I'm gonna start taking pictures of the stuff I do and I'm gonna post it out there. Not because I'm, I'm bragging on my own work, but because I think practitioners want to see what other practitioners are doing. And the truth is they get tweeted, they get retweeted, they get pulled into other hashtags not associated with UDL, and that's really meaningful connectivity. And so it, it doesn't necessarily mean like, well, build your own consulting business or go write some books. It means be connected to, 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 to anybody in any way. Even like Brian said, even if that just means you're grinding in your own PLC in your own schools, like, that's really great work and it's, it's meaningful connectivity. That was what was so powerful yesterday. Who, who caught Camille Wheeler yesterday uh, on Louis' podcast? Did anybody? Yo, right? And there she is right over there, right? Like she's like, Brian, you son of a, right? But that's okay because Camille, you're an influencer. And what you did, you, you're just, you may think that you only, you're just doing what you feel is right. But when you came up here and you shared your story, there were a lot of people that were like, I get it. And I could do it right? And that's, that's being an influencer. The idea of the rise and grind, so, you, so obviously you can tell which ones I wrote and which ones Joni wrote. Hers are nice and flowery, mine are rise and grind, get that hustle. Um, but that's the truth. Like this to me is the truth. Every day you get up and you know that the work is hard. So you get up, you get to that grind, right? And you say, I got to hustle, I got to hustle UDL. I got to put it out there. I got to figure out how I push that, push that boulder up the hill in some cases, how I, how I ice skate uphill, how I skate through mud, right? And I, and I think that it becomes relentless, right? It's that relentless grit of like, you're gonna have setbacks. You're gonna get hit, right? Like you're gonna be like, we're making, move, we're making progress and making movement, and then it gets shut down, right? So then we're just gonna try and start one more time. Keep going, keep going. We heard Katie talk about that. I mean, Katie got up here and talked about her failures, right? In a very public way. And one of the things that she talked about is like, you know, like this is a picture of maybe success at Groton Dunstable right now, but the truth is like, you, know, you get your teeth kicked in. I mean, you go and do things and, and you think it's gonna be great and what you ex experience ends up feeling a little bit more like abject failure. But that doesn't mean you don't get back in the arena, right? But like you always go back and you always have to keep getting in there. Right? You always have to keep getting in there and be willing to iterate on your work and be willing to go back in. Yep, Sorry. I guess that's Next slide. Mm -hmm. right. So you've seen these signs see. everywhere, right? How do you see UDL advancing in the next five years? And it's interesting because this is a conversation that lots of us have had. Right? Like, what is this going to look like? We talk about, like, well, what are the missing pieces? What are some of the technologies that make this stronger? There are lots of things that we, that we talk about, like, well, I don't know, like, maybe this is the future. Um, and so Brian and I kind of started talking about, like, well, what are some of the things that, that resonated throughout um, the last few days in terms of, like, what, you know, in the talks and breakout sessions, what, what's going to move it forward? And one of those things I just kind of mentioned, and that's constant iteration. And I hear teachers say frequently, like, gosh, things have just changed so much. And it's, 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 it's not a challenge when they say, like, well, show me a field that hasn't. And the reality is, if you're in a field that's not changing and growing, you're in a field that's dying. And education is maybe one of the last standing institutions in this country. It's certainly not dying. So it's up to us to continue to iterate on it and make it as, as good as we can possibly make it for all of our learners. Uh we're going to go back one more, please. We've got to get through these right here. Uh, so identifying and, and synergizing with adjacent frameworks. There's a lot of frameworks out there. And while I love our UDL world and our UDL fam, I've got to be honest with you, we, we're small. We're mighty, but we're small too, right? So there, and there are lots of other frameworks that match up or lots of other pedagogical kind of ideas that match up. So why aren't we hooking up with each other, right? Why aren't we, why aren't we leading the charge together, right? It's sharing the message with those other small and mighty movements. It's believing in your work. I'm going to get us through. We're following through here. It's believing in your work, but being critical of it. Like you have to be, you have to understand that you have expertise. But part of that expert learning is saying, is this working, right? And if it's not, I got to be, I got to be reflective enough to say it's not. And then these are the pieces that I have to change. And then the final one is you can't boil the ocean. And that's, I wish I could claim that as mine. I'm going to say it enough times that I can claim it as mine, but it really comes from Joy Zabala. And Joy Zabala, she told me one day, because I was like, man, I'm having a hard time getting teachers onboarded to this idea of UDL. And she's like, Brian, you're asking them to boil the ocean. You're asking them to do everything, right? Where are they starting small? Where are they getting some successes, right? And it's how do you build on those successes? How, and then how do you build that snowball mentality? Like, this is a little bit, a little bit more, a little bit more. Now we've got a movement. You want to go to the next one? Yeah. You got our last slide. One slide. Can you move one forward one? Forward one, please. So as we think about like, well, what does the, the next five years look like? I don't know, I think those are some things. 
But what we do know is that when you leave here and you go away with the new learning that you have, this is what we're asking you to do, to choose your corner, to pick a way at it carefully, intensely and to the best of your ability, and that way you might change the world. You are already, so it's time to take back the great learning that you've had at this event and the great connections and networks that, you, that you've created here and go back to your own corner of the world and really start picking away at it and making it the very best you can and to come back next year and share what you've been doing in your corner of the world again. So, yep. And that's it. We thank, thank you, you all very much. We're going to bring Jamie up to pay some bills and get you out of here, y'all. I cannot believe that we're finally coming to the end of uh, a wonderful two-day conference. Uh, but I say finally because we've been dealing with AV issues all day long and throughout the entire conference. And these are things that we plan for over and over and run through over and over and over again. And uh, we apologize for the AV issues. Uh, we thought we had it all figured out. Obviously, we did not. And so this has actually been one of our worst years with AV uh, since we've been here. All right, uh, we want to give you the power to go back into your schools, to go back to your job, wherever that might be, whether you're in, in industry, whether you're in a classroom, whether you're in an office helping teachers grow and supporting change in your own environment. Uh, that is part of why we came here today, but we want you to know that you can take something with you. Uh, many of the presenters have put forth a proceeding, and in academic terms, it's a paper that comes out and explains the different sessions. Uh, you will be getting a note uh, in the very next few days around where to access those proceedings so that you can actually take these things with you, share them with your, with your, uh, your PLC or whatever it might be, but you'll have your proceeding that you can take with you. We are also, uh, we've had a number of people talk to us about SCED and the idea that are the slides on SCED? Are the slides on SCED? We're gonna send another notice out to many of the people who presented and have them, if they've not put them on SCED, uh, we're gonna have them uh, upload them their slides to SCED if they're willing to do so. I know many of us, myself included, are picking up things as we move throughout the conference and saying, oh, I should add that to my slide. And so we add that last thing to the slide and we never, we never re-upload to SCED, but we're gonna, we're gonna send out a notice to presenters to do that. So proceedings. And SCED will be updated soon, and we'll, we'll send a notification out about that so that when you go home, you could be your own influencer. We've had a number of questions in the last couple days about, hey, I saw this person with cards. Where do I get these cards, right? And for those who don't know, uh, there's a card deck on uh, UDL Learning space, space Design, which looks at how the intersection between physical spaces and pedagogy kind of work. Each card is mapped back to uh, the guidelines. I just heard at the registration desk there's a few more available out there, so on the way out, if you want to talk to them about this, they're available out there. You can pick them up here today, uh, but you can also get them online. But if you want to carry something home and, and uh, have something with you, uh, that's there. Next slide, please. So Tom Tobin, the man with the stash, right, uh, came up to me right before I went on and said, uh, hey, uh, we know there's some people that are going to be here still this evening. Uh, if you're going to be here this evening, how many people are going to be here this evening? Raise your hand. A few? Yeah, yeah. If you're interested in gathering for dinner, if you're interested in for gathering for dinner, uh, Tom's idea, meet in the lobby at 6 p.m. Meet in the lobby at 6 p.m. So if you're interested in hanging out, uh, uh, doing what you do at dinner, and just kind of socializing with someone new, 6 p.m. Uh, in the lobby. 6 p.m. in the lobby. All right, thank yous. Again, huge thank you to PSRTI. We cannot do what we do without them. Uh, we've thought numerous times about all the contributions that they've given us uh, in personnel, in just thought-provoking sort of uh, every, every uh, meeting that we get on with them and them saying, what if we do this? Have you thought about this? And they've just been an amazing team to work with. So uh, give uh, PSRTI a hand. Thank you very much. 
I have to thank the UDL Iron Advisory Board. I'm looking out there and I see uh, some of you still, um, still sitting there. A number of people had to run out and grab flights. We have an advisory board that, that meets and advises us minimally on an annual basis, but ideally more than one time a year um, on big topics related to UDL, things that we as the IRN are dealing with and facing. Obviously, as we move forward with the merger, uh, with CAST, it's going to be the advisory board on the back end helping us work through some of these decisions and what it all kind of comes together like and how we move forward so that we continue to have great programs. I also want to thank our operations team. We are largely a volunteer organization. We have about 1.5 staff members, 1.5 staff members, and that's just Mackenzie. Ha ha ha. No, uh, no we, have, we do have about 1.5 uh, staff members. but. We have an operations team that, that ranges, depending on the time of year, any t anywhere between uh, five to upwards of eight people. They meet on a weekly basis on Fridays, and they are primarily volunteers that kind of come together to make sure this happens every year, to also make sure that things like network and learn happen, to make things like uh, ensuring the research committee uh, and all the other committees, the SIGs, and everything's kind of running smoothly and how we support these SIGs. I know we have a SIG in higher education that has upwards of 100 people on it. Uh, to help all of that infrastructure go forward, it's primarily volunteer business. It's a volunteer business and they've always done that and we really appreciate the operations team. And then finally, the UDL IRN has its board and we have uh, de very dedicated board members who have been challenged with a difficult task over the last year. Uh, not only in putting this together, but in making some really tough decisions around their organizations, and what we do with learning design, et cetera. And so I'd like to really, really thank our board for, uh, for all their time and dedication. Here we go. <laughs> Let me tell you how hard this slide was to put together. It was a very hard slide to put together. We had Dave and Sue kind of uh, sneaking around behind the scenes, trying to get a picture of two people that do not want their picture taken. Uh, Mackenzie is obviously incredible, and we can say a lot about her, but first I want to talk about Sarah, who's been running the slides and helping us out when the clicker's not working and back. Uh, Sarah is a wonderful intern. She's also a person, if you receive the UDL weekly update, uh, she and Mackenzie both work on that and send that out on a weekly basis. This is the one email you get that kind of summarizes things going on around UDL. Uh, and, and these two are the people that do it. Now, Mackenzie, uh, again, uh, someone told me we we're out at the uh, food trucks last night, and someone said, I think Mackenzie is trending on uh, social media. <laughs> uh, and I would not be surprised. She is, uh, she is just an incredible woman who runs a lot of the show. Uh, and she is the person who uh, makes sure that we have enough seats out, but she also does some high-level planning on things, and she's just an, an awesome, awesome person, and no one tried to steal her, please, because she is ours, and we like hanging on to her. Um, but uh, to tell you, to give you this point, uh, we are going to be meeting tomorrow to start talking about 2020. 2020, and where we're going to be, how it's going to look, and all of the issues that we dealt with today, and how do we overcome the issues, how do we overcome the barriers, right? And then I said, Mackenzie, you should take some time off. You know, you should take Sunday off, take a little bit next week off, and she says, no, it's the, one of the busiest weeks I have, and I'm not going to take time off, right? And so she is a dedicated, dedicated person, and we could not do this without, without Mackenzie, so just another uh, round of applause for <laughs> Mackenzie. I do see her back there. She's the one in, uh, with the red face and kind of a little embarrassed right now. <laughs> so, and then thank you to all the volunteers, uh, people that helped you throughout the entire process, not only here, but through registration, et cetera. Uh, the, the volunteers that are on the ground, the volunteers that we have virtually, and everything that they do. We cannot do this without the volunteers. We are, I, I said it many times already today, we are a volunteer organization. And as we merge and consider the merger for CAST, we are, we are going to continue to rely on the field. We want to be the voice of the field. We want to be the voice of the field. And to do that, it takes a lot of people working, working continuously to drive that vision, to drive the voice. And so we thank our volunteers.
finally, I've said this enough times, we want to thank, we want to thank our sponsors and the people that have come together uh, to help this all kind of come together. I've had numerous conversations with each and every one of them, uh, from AI Media, Tech Help, Gould Evans, Cast, Norvin Ivo, and Tippy Talk. They've all been wonderful at what they do. Uh, there, I know there's, we've had other vendors and, and ed tech folks in, in the room, and we've had architecture firms and design firms in the room. Uh, we believe, we believe, we truly believe that to move education, educators can't do it on their own. Educators cannot transform education on their own. It is ingrained in everything in all aspects of society, and we have multiple stakeholders throughout the education system, and we often overlook we often overlook uh, the vendors, right? Vendors contribute a heck of a lot to education. And sometimes they contribute a lot in not such a good way. So the idea is, we've always believed, if we bring them to the table and help them solve our problems with us, and not just for us, but with us, that that's how we truly change. If we bring everyone to the table, if we bring everyone to the table, education leaders, educators, researchers, professors, and the vendors and the people who are trying to drive this, if we bring everyone to the table to solve the problems, that's how we're going to change the system. It, can't, it cannot just be done by educators alone. So we truly appreciate our vendors coming to the table and helping us put on this event and trying to keep the costs as low as we could possibly get them. Uh, we truly appreciate them. So thank you very much. So for the last uh, five years, CAST has held an event every summer. And it's a different event than this. It's quite a bit different. And it's meaningful, and, and they bring together true leaders of the field in multiple ways. The, U, the CAST UDL Symposium is going to be August 7th through the 9th in Cambridge, Massachusetts. This year's topic is becoming an expert learner. It is about becoming an expert learner. So if you feel like you want to hang out in Cambridge, in August. Uh, it's going to be av available to you. Now, I would normally tell you that Cambridge is nice in August, at least nicer than Florida in August. Last year, maybe not, but it is, a, <laughs> it is a little bit cooler. The weather tends to be a little bit nicer, and it's a great area to hang out in uh, and to see uh, some of the heritage of our, of our country. Uh, the CAST UDL Symposium is a wonderful event to attend. So that's August 7th through the 9th. Finally, tonight we take off like a few hours. We don't really take off <laughs> because we'll be talking quite a bit about AV and facilities and all the other stuff that's going on and our experiences will be reflecting on those. But tomorrow morning we do wake up with a very targeted goal of thinking about next year. And we wanted to make a database decision. Please provide us any sort of feedback through, evalua through the evaluation you can either scan it in or obviously type in the tiny URL. Um, provide us the feedback uh, as soon as you possibly can. We would truly, truly appreciate it so that we can move on to next year's event planning. So, and that's all we have for you. We want to say thank you for attending. Thank you for coming out and uh, sharing with us all of your knowledge and expertise. And thank you for being part of a growing network. <laughs>